Good morning. Thank you for joining me this morning. My name is Alan Penny. I'm the manager of the Electrical Trades Department at Box Hill Institute. Uh, just some background. Uh, I'm a qualified electrician, uh, in addition to a number of university qualifications in education, management and business. Uh, what I'm going to do this morning is, uh, is present to you a number of slides to provide an overview of the electrical industry and employment in the industry. Firstly, uh, my the first slide, if we go to the first slide, what I'm going to say to you is, uh, who are we? And um, I'll talk about Box Hill Institute and our, and our facilities and how to get into the profession. Uh, who are we? We're a specialised electrical training centre. We're, this department has over a thousand students, so it's a very large department. It's one of the biggest departments at Box Hill Institute and one of the largest in the state of Victoria. Uh, the department has very strong industry connections and we employ very experienced teachers. They're all qualified tradespersons. And in addition to that, the department's won awards with their students. And last year we, we, we won the Victorian World Skills Competition and we were due to go to the Australian Skills Competition, but thanks to COVID, um, that's been postponed. Uh, in 2019, we had 21 groups of pre-apprentices, the CERT II program, uh, go through the department. And currently we have 27 groups of electrical apprentices currently studying. Now that's a lot of students. That's if you, if there's approximately 15 to 16 students in each group, you multiply that by the 27 uh, numbers of groups, and that's a significant cohort of, of apprentices. So we have a Box Hill Institute Electrical Trades Department has a very strong stake in uh, the training of electrical apprentices in the state of Victoria. In addition, last year we are proud to say 25% of our certificate to graduated, graduates returned as apprentices. Now that's a significant figure that 25% of our Cert 2s managed to get apprenticeships with us and return back to us. Now the other cohort, other graduates of course can end up at other TAFE institutes depending on the local of where they live or where their employer particularly wants them to go and study. But we're very proud of that, uh, that particular figure. Our locations, as you can see, we have, there's three major campus locations at Box Hill Institute. Uh, the, the major one is Box Hill itself, the Elga campus. And additionally, we have a campus out at Lilydale. Now we have the good fortune of um, just starting to build a brand new campus out there purely for the trades area, which the electrical department will have a large stake in. That'll be completed by March next year, and that's worth $12 million, uh, specifically for the Lilydale region and the catchment around there. So that's a significant thing to happen to this uh, Box Hill that we have, uh, we're going to support those that live in that region. So people that live in Croydon and the like, rather than travel all the way to the Elga campus, they can go to a brand new campus being constructed at Lilydale. What do, what do we do? Well, we deliver a certificate two in electrotechnology. We deliver the cert three in electrotechnology, which is the apprenticeship. And those that graduate can also go on to a certificate four program. If we look at the CERT II Electro Technology Program, it's called pre-apprenticeship. It is not compulsory to complete a CERT II Electro Technology Program to, to undertake a CERT III, but the industry like uh, people or students to undertake that. It shows a commitment to the industry, and we have a full-time program of 10 weeks duration at, at the moment, uh, which is free TAFE, of course. And fundamentally, they learn basic employability skills the electrical industry and a pathway into the apprenticeship. Now the apprenticeship itself is a four years employment duration, but the, the study regime is uh, on day release, one day a week, uh, students are released to us for three and a half years. It leads to an A grade electrician's license. Now this is a significant thing. To have a licensed trade, there's only two in the state of Victoria, uh, and electrical is one of them, to and which I have one of these licenses and I'm very proud of it, an A-grade electrician's license. It's a transportable qualification across all of Australia and you need to be an apprentice to be employed. Uh, after that, you can undertake a certificate four, 
uh, in post-apprenticeship studies, which specialises in motor control and PLC. Now, in addition, we have another apprenticeship program that's uh, aligned with the electrical industry and it's in security equipment. Uh, our students come to us for three years on a block release. Block release means at one week at a time. What the course is a specialised course in the security systems that are being uh, undertaken and installed across um, society these days. And as you can see, the security equipment apprenticeship provides practical and co comprehensive training in the installation and pre-commissioning and wiring up of security systems in both commercial and industrial uh, premises across Victoria. And we have students come from interstate for this course. It's quite a unique course. So over 100 students currently. Why should you study this electrotechnology? As I spoke of before, it's a licensed trade, significant career outcomes. It's a very, it's a trade in high demand and it's a highly sought after profession. You, it leads to many, many other employment opportunities. Uh, as I spoke of before, it's a transportable qualification. And after you complete your apprenticeship, you can work for yourself, you can work for an employer, or you can undertake further studies to uh, enhance your career. The employment streams are normally categorised as domestic, commercial and industrial. So there's employment opportunities across all of those particular streams. Now, we've been very proud to say that the, during this COVID crisis, the employment has, uh, has remained for apprentices. Very few apprentices have been uh, put out of work and those that have been have lost their job for, for the unfortunate circumstances we're in have been able to gain uh, employment um, fairly soon after. So we're very proud of that. I'm just going to provide an overview of the electrotechnology Cert 2 and Cert 3. The Cert 2, as I spoke of before, is a 10-week full-time program. It provides a, a basic electrical theory, employ, employability skills in the electrical industry, overview of the electrical industry, and basic hand skills and basic workshop skills. They undertake first aid studies and they complete a a unit called a white card. White card is what's required for any person to enter a building site or construction site. It is uh, an understanding of occupational health and safety matters. Once apprenticed, uh, the first year of an apprenticeship is fundamentally learning the trade skills uh, to work in that industry. Second year, we, we develop uh, electrical theory knowledge and there is some calculations involved with uh, understanding how electricity works, because uh, it is physics based, but it shouldn't be fearful. Uh, no one should be in fear of understanding the theory involved. The third year, we prepare you to become a qualified tradesperson. And in the final six months, we prepare you for the licensing examination. How do you get into the industry? Well, first of all, we're suggesting that you start with a certificate two the pre-apprenticeship apprenticeship program, and it's currently free, free TAFE, and it provides the knowledge and skills to enter the, end of the industry as an apprentice. I would seek an employer to obtain an apprenticeship. As soon as you feel that you want to become an electrician, you should start seeking the opportunity to uh, gain employment. And you can do that by sending your resume out to large employers. Work with ASINS. Now, ASINS is an acronym that stands for Australian Apprenticeship Support Networks. And they have a contract with government. There are four companies. And I've given you examples there of MEGT or Serena Russo. Uh, they, their contract is to get people apprenticeships. They have a contract, the more apprenticeships they gain and sign up, the better it is for their contract. So they are proactive in finding job opportunities as an apprentice in the industry. So I've shown you MEGT and Serena Russo are friends of ours. I would seek work experience opportunities. If you know someone that is an electrician, ask if you can work with them for a period of time to get a feel for the industry. And of course, look, look at seek.com for opportunities. Just type that in and find uh, apprenticeships. 
I thank you for your time for this presentation and we'll, we will show you a, a video on how to enrol in our programs and then I'll take questions and respond to your questions from there. Ready to apply at Box Hill Institute? The first step is to contact us by calling 1300 Box Hill, submitting an inquiry through our website or via live chat. We're here to answer all your questions and ensure we find a course that's right for you. We will email you an application pack, which will include a link to start your application. The application will take about 30 minutes to complete and submit. Make sure you have your ID and your proof of residency handy, such as your Medicare card or your passport, as you'll need to upload a photo of this to your application. As part of the application pack, you may be required to complete a language literacy numeracy profile. This is to ensure that you meet the entry requirements into the course and for us to support you in your studies. The profile will take you around 90 minutes and must be completed in one sitting. The other one is a pre-training review document which will ask you questions about your interests, your aspirations, your career goals and your prior study. Once completed, you will need to upload both documents to your online application. Depending on the course that you are applying for, you may be required to submit extra documents such as a subject selection form, a workplace declaration form or an under 18 parent slash guardian consent form. You may also be required to watch an online information session as part of your course. This will be discussed with you when you inquire. Once your application has been submitted, you may be required to attend an interview or an audition remotely. We will contact you if you're required to do this. After this, our team will be in touch to book an appointment to finalise your application. This appointment will be conducted over the phone where we will run you through the pre-training review. This will include timetable information, fees and student support. Once we have finalised your application, we will email you a conditional letter of offer. You'll need to follow the steps to accept your offer online. To finalise your enrolment, you'll need to make payment. There are several ways to do this, such as a payment plan or VET student loan. We look forward to welcoming you to Box Hill Institute. If you have any questions, I'll respond to those now. I have a question here that says, hey, Alan, if I do a security apprenticeship, will I be able to qualify to be an A-grade electrician? Uh, they are two separate apprenticeships and uh, they, they share, half the course shares these same uh, theories, but at the second half of the security program, it streams into something quite different. So, uh, in short, I think the answer would be no. Quite difficult, they are two separate apprenticeships.
I, I have a question here regarding someone's health that was private. Uh, in regarding asthma, no, it shouldn't be an issue to becoming an electrician. Uh, the other question I can see right now, what qualities make a good electrician? Honesty. Uh, uh, the profession is about hand skills and also some psychomotor skills as well. Because it's a, uh, a, a highly qualified trade, to be able to think and to be able to use your hand sk skills as well is a very good combination. That's So honesty, hand, being, the ability to think, be able to use your hands as well. Uh, the other question, how is the mass level components of this course? Uh, it's, um, you'll be studying, there's a couple of subjects in there called uh, AC theory, where you'll need to understand Pythagoras uh, theorem uh, and trigonometry, but we were able to work with people. It's um, when you consider how many apprentices we have, they at all various standards of intellectual or academic capacity, it's not an issue. Uh, another question I have here is, is there a high demand for electricians? Absolutely. What sort of salary will I make? Well, you can, the salaries vary. You can earn in a factory, you could earn up to $100,000. I see electricians earning eighty or $90,000. Those that are able to get employment, in the mining fraternity, of course, they earn a lot of money as well. So it's a well-paid profession. Another question, are there spaces available in free TAFE in July and October for the CERT two? Absolutely. We, our July intake is a double intake and we're about half full right now and we can accept uh, students today. If you made contact with our customer service people, we're happy to take you on board today. There are still plenty of vacancies at Lilydale as well. So if you live in between Box Hill and Lilydale, you could um, choose to um, at either campus and Lilydale has plenty of vacancies as well. The other question here, when are the enrolment dates? Because I'm trying to decide which intake to take part in. Uh, we do have July uh, and October. This is for the Certificate 2 program I take it. Uh, July and October, uh, both intakes. Look, I, I, if you want to study a Certificate 2, I'd enrol now. Now's the time. We, our, we have a, our delivery right now is part of it is remote. We have a, a learning management system that's interactive and we bring the practical component of the course on campus in smaller groups for safety and, and health and well-being during the COVID uh, crisis. So we are, we are delivering part, part of it on, online, the certificate too, and we're bringing on campus the practical part of the course. My next question here is, I was just wondering while doing the pre-app, as if it gets to the end, of, end, will Box Hill help you find an apprenticeship? We do give guidance. We don't guarantee we'll get you an apprenticeship, but we do bring in uh, companies to talk to uh, potential uh, students. They are obviously looking for the high quality students. And so it's about when you participate in the CERT too, it's about being diligent, turning up on time, and showing yourself as being very interested in, in joining the industry. We do assist you in getting an apprenticeship. We don't guarantee that. Question, how many women successfully complete their, complete their apprenticeship? We've just jumped, jumped and I'll go back to that. How many women successfully completed their apprenticeship? 
out of the 25% mentioned, the 25% was graduates from the Cert II into an apprenticeship and how many women successfully completed their apprenticeship, we would say, I would say to you about 15 to 20% of our student apprentice population are female. Uh, it's well embraced in the industry. I have two teachers here now, both female, and highly skilled, highly qualified, and highly intelligent. Uh, another question here, I missed your point earlier. Can you explain how the security thing works? It is an apprenticeship uh, specialising on uh, specialising in the installation and configuration of security equipment. It's it, it shares the electrical program, so the units to about the second year are the same, but it streams into the third year as a quite different program. The next question here is: Do you have to be physically strong? Not necessarily. Not necessarily at all. Uh, the next question: I'm a mature age person. I need to be a Sparky. That, and what, wasn't that a good name, Sparky? I like that term. It, it's hard to find apprenticeships for me. Can you help? Yes, we can assist, and we have plenty of mature age uh, st students undertaking our Cert II program. There are many opportunities. Some companies like to employ a, employ a mature age uh, because they already have a license uh, and have commitment to family and find themselves uh, employment as really focused down on the outcome of becoming an electrician. The next question is, is it better getting an apprenticeship with someone you know or going through a big company? If you can get an apprenticeship, you grab it. As simple as that. I'll simplify my answer. If you can get an apprenticeship with anybody, you take it. Does Box Hill Institute assist with finding work experience? We assist, we don't guarantee. It's not a core business for us, but we lead you in the right direction. The next question, could I get a job anywhere in Australia as an electrician? Absolutely. The strongest apprenticeship program in the electrical industry is in Victoria. We are the ones that have the, the only license, formal license, that is transportable across to other states. Anybody that comes from another state to us has to go through a process to have their qualifications ratified to work in the state of Victoria. The next question, is there a work-life balance in being an electrician? Uh, any, any job requires work-life balance. That's up to the person, how, how long they would want to work. Work-life balance is up to the individual. Next question, may I do a Cert 3 electro technology even with no apprenticeship? Uh, times right now are pretty hard to get one. No, you won't be able you, to undertake the Cert 3. You need to have an employer. Is there an electrical course in the city campus? I'm afraid not. Uh, Box Hill is just a train ride away, uh, so I'm afraid we don't deliver in the city campus. What sort of industry experience do Box Hill teachers have? Oh, gee, it's very, it's, it's huge. I'd, I'd hate to count up the number of um, years of experience. Most of them have come into teaching probably midway in through their electrical career. So you'd see people in their 40s becoming teachers, uh, so therefore they'd all have a minimum to enter the industry of about 20 years experience each. Hi Alan, do apprentices usually stick with the same employer throughout the four years? Most do, but you, they do move around. Most do, but I would say 10 to 15% would change employers. That doesn't preclude uh, any entering the industry, you can move around. The next question, have you known anyone to complete an electrical apprenticeship, then go on to study or move forward to become an electrical engineer? How common is this? Not common, but it does happen. Is it different for mature age ind individuals to gain pathways? So I'm alluding to, I would suggest the CERT two, the CERT three program. Is it difficult mature age? No. It's, it's um, 
it seems to be equal between employment at the moment, a, a younger person and a more mature age person gaining employment. It depends on the company's requirements. Um, this person has admitted to being, oh, let me just read it again. This person has indicated they're 24 years of age. Will it be an extra? Would it be extra difficult for me to find an apprenticeship? No. Uh, another question. I've already completed a, a bachelor's degree. Can I qualify for the Cert II free TAFE? Yes, you can. Only once and once only. Next question. Uh, you would need to be upskilling in order to okay, to be upskilling to be eligible for free tape as bachelor's degree is higher than a cert two, you would not be eligible. Uh, okay, that's the answer from uh, our admissions team in customer service. The next uh, question, does the security course mention involve a security license? No, they're two separate matters. Uh, when we talk about security, it's not about being a bouncer outside a nightclub. Uh, there is a license that can be pursued uh, for people to be licensed to install certain products, but uh, this, that, that is the only security license outcome. It says, the question here is, is the qualification recognised worldwide? Are there opportunities to travel once fully qualified? I'm taking it that would be the security course. Uh, the security course uh, can be used overseas. A recognition is not as strong as what the electrician's course is. They recognise our electrician's course overseas. Next question, would it be hard for a 26 year old to get an apprenticeship? Yes and no, depends on the company. Uh, it depends on you at interview, presenting yourself as a committed, focused person and mature and, and willing to commit to that company. That's what they would be looking for. They're the attributes they want to see. Are there any more questions at all for me to respond to? My next question is, if I have deferred midway through a bachelor's degree, can I qualify for free TAFE? That's been answered, yes. Uh, the next question, what do you mean by upskilling? I'm wanting to start a career as an, um, as an electrician. Would a mature age, having completed my degree, upskilling is about uh, changing your uh, direction in your, in your uh, profession or your career. The, the government classified as upskilling.
Are there any other questions at all? Uh, the question was about I have is about um, dust induced asthma. An issue is it an issue? No, uh, I'm sure there are means of protection uh, that you can uh, wear if it's a dusty location, like any employee in any environment. The question I have in front of me, does it cost more to do the Certificate 3 course? Well, the Certificate 3 course is an apprenticeship program and the fees can be subsidised by your employer and government uh, subsidise the training of, of apprentices, and which will become more prevalent, I would suspect, as we come out of COVID. Government will put more money towards the trades, which will make this particular profession even more uh, specialised and lucrative. There are no more questions in front of me at the moment. I want to thank you for uh, taking the time with me this morning and I hope that I've been able to present uh, that the electrical industry is uh, a, a profession and trade and career that is um, appealing and that I hope you consider joining. I, can, I see that the government will be putting a lot of effort to support the trades in the future. So I see that employment will increase no end. I thank you for your time and have a good morning.